Chuck, we're back. All right. I couldn't stay away. uh, Well, yes. I got some more explaining to do. You got some explaining to do, (laughs) Neil. (laughs) Oh, my God. I sound like my mother-in-law. That's crazy. (laughs) Or Ricky Ricardo, one or the other. Well, my mother-in-law is Ricky Ricardo. (laughs) (laughs) So I just, I thought I, I had some more things to say about the rotation of the earth. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah. we did we did something about what would happen if it stopped. We, we did and, something about what, how many people Superman would kill if right. he if swam, he if flew he, backwards and stopped the Earth. If he flew backwards, slowed down the Earth, stopped it, reversed it, stopped it again, and sent it back. Yeah, they, they, nobody left on Earth. <laughs> as if that would actually reverse time, though. As, right, as if. Right, right. As if. So even if it did and could, he still killed 7 billion people. Exactly. Okay? <laughs> Or however many people were on Earth the year of that movie, which I think was 1970, in the seven, late 70s. But really? Any, yeah, I know. I know. So, so, here you go. You've heard of this thing called centrifugal force, right? The thing that it makes you sort of fly off because somebody spun something around and things fly off. It's what keeps bucket in the water when you do the whole windmill. It sounds like you've done water. some experiments. Good. If you, so water, if you take a, water a, a, in a bucket, a bucket of water, you can even with a cup of water. If you take it and if you if you spin it sort of fast enough, like like a windmill style, then the water will not come out. Right. Even though you it was upside down. And if you ever played matchbox cars where the car goes upside down and then comes out the other side, you need sufficient centrifugal force to keep the thing up against. The track. I don't know. Okay. I so, was a Hot Wheels guy, by the way. So. Oh, you were? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm a Hot Wheels guy. I know you said Matchbox. I, I get say, it. Sorry. It was Hot Wheels that had the loop-to-loop. Excuse me. <laughs> Forgive my... my. Okay. Then the track was yellow and it pieced together. I remember the yes. whole thing. Yes. And it made for a great way to like slap the bottom of a friend. It's like you take that Hot Wheels track and you just whack somebody. Oh, off. oh, oh, oh. Okay. So yeah. you had issues as a child. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's another show. We'll right, have you get exactly. them out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Never occurred to ch- me. <laughs> Multiple use kicked out of <laughs> elementary school. <laughs> All right. So this it turns out there's no such thing as centrifugal force. It's the word we give to this thing that feels like a force operating on you if you are the water in that bucket or if you're in that amusement park where i think they call it the cyclone where you're sort of pinned against this the wall of it and it rotates and you feel this pressure increase on you so what's happening is because you're getting spun you have an urge to fly off at a tangent of that circle okay that urge to fly off that is prevented, you will feel as a centrifugal force. Okay? Okay. So if you. in any moment the walls just disappeared on the cyclone, at, is it called the cyclone? Whatever that was called. At the flying I forget saucer. the name of it, but I no, do remember. I think I'm misremembering because cyclone is the roller coaster at, at, right. at Coney Island. At Coney Island. So whatever that thing is, we've all done it, right? Mm-hmm. And... If at any instant while that's spinning, the walls just disappeared, you would just fly off at a tangent. Everybody would just fly off going in exactly the tangential direction they were going mm-hmm. right at the moment the walls disappeared. Okay. I sm- so, I sm- lawsuit. <laughs> lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Chuck, you're so cynical, Chuck. <laughs> so what the wall does is prevent that from happening. And then you, it feels as though there's a force acting on you. And by the way, that is the worst ride to take if you get nausea, if you feel nausea on, on, on amusement park rides. Because if you try to throw up, the throw up will get pinned to the back of your throat. You'd have to like turn your head sideways and then the throw up goes sideways onto the next person. So, so it's- I, I don't think we have a problem here, Neil. <laughs> I always noticed that that ride always had an extra smell to it compared to other, <laughs> to other rides. So anyhow, so this centrifugal force, you will feel it as though it's a real force. And so that's why we gave it a name, all right? And by, by the way, Coriolis force is another fictitious force. It feels like it's a real force operating, but it's the product of other things going on. The Coriolis okay. force turns storms into... In a clockwise... In, 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 in a counter, counterclockwise, counterclockwise direction. In the north and clockwise in the south. 
In fact, we'll, we'll land there at the end of this explainer. So what that means is if you're on Earth and Earth is spinning, you ought to feel some centrifugal force. Yay! You, you ought to. Now, who would feel the most centrifugal force on Earth? Where would you be? Uh, at, the, at the center, like at the equator. At the equator, okay. Right. Now, of course, we all finish one rotation in 24 hours. However, they're traveling a much bigger distance to do so. Okay, they move the entire circumference of the Earth, about 25,000 miles in one day. Whereas as you approach Santa Claus on the North Pole, your circle becomes shorter and shorter. So you are moving slower and slower. Okay. Okay. And centrifugal. So, so the people at the the people in Ecuador should all have their hands up, just going wee. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> Just like any good amusement park ride. All hey! the equator people. <laughs> All the equator people. Yay! <laughs> so, uh, you get a photographer to take your picture and sell it back to you at the end of that? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, so, the equator is about 25,000 miles around, and it takes 24 hours for one full rotation. Okay. So, if you divide those two numbers, you get approximately... They're going to approximately a thousand miles an hour. Right. Okay. Right. And that's fast. I mean, that's faster than you would ever be going in anything in your life. That's right. Okay. Now you don't feel that because first earth connects you to its surface, but also you're moving very uniformly through space to do so. And the air around you is moving with you. Uh -huh. So it's not like air is coming past you at a thousand miles and you feel, oh my gosh, I'm in motion and I feel the jiggle and the shake. By the way, pre-Galileo, people's arguments against Earth's motion was if Earth were turning and moving, we'd feel it. Right. Okay? Why wouldn't you feel If you're on a horse and buggy, you right. feel you that. Feel mm -hmm. All right? You feel the bumps and the wiggles and the jiggles. And even if the ride is smooth, you feel it. So right. clearly, Earth can't be moving. We, of course, we're not rotating either. Everything is moving around us. So it wasn't just our ego that supported the idea that we are in the center of all things. Center. At the center of all things. It's not just what's happening with our ego. It kind of made sense when you thought about it. Okay? Right. What they didn't realize is that if you made things smoother and smoother and smoother, you will feel the motion less and less and less. Right. So ask anybody on an ocean liner, when the ocean liner first pulls out from the port, you don't really notice that. And you look around and you say, wait a minute, why is the dock going by me? And you look right. and you realize you're the one in motion, not the dock. Okay. And so the bigger the vessel, sort of the more stately is its movement through space and time, and the less you notice its motion. So, uh, you know, I, I was once on a bus on the tunnel going from Paris to London, okay? okay? And this is a long tunnel that not only goes under land, but goes under the, the English, English Channel. English Channel. Okay? Yeah. And so um, that is very well designed. It's very smooth. So I'm in a bus, and that they drive the bus onto a car, and the car has no windows, onto a, a, a railroad car. car has no windows. So I'm in there, and I feel it kind of move a little bit but it's a slow acceleration and i think it has very high top speeds but i have no concept of this okay now it inflate this scenario to the entire earth okay you are moving a thousand miles an hour as earth rotates you are moving 18 what's this 18 miles per second in orbit around the sun mm -hmm. and you don't feel any of that okay Okay. You don't feel any of that. So here's my point. All right. So the faster you rotate, okay, the greater is the centrifugal force you will f that will operate on you. Okay. So let's go back to all the residents of Ecuador, which is not the only country that straddles the equator. Okay. Right. In fact, the equator goes entirely through the middle of Africa, for example. All right. So, uh, so here we go. You can ask. If it's trying to fling you off the earth, okay. but the force of gravity is resisting back, 
by what force is it trying to fling you off? That upward centrifugal force subtracts from the gravitational force that the Earth is trying to put on you. It subtracts. Okay. So, Chuck, what do you weigh here, here and now? Uh, 192 pounds. 100, yeah. You used to be like 170. So, I used to be 178. Yeah. And now I have a Corona baby that I'm pregnant with. <laughs> corona. I'm pregnant with a Corona baby. All right, I'll give you the 190 pounds, okay? Okay. So if you do the math, you run to Ecuador, because we're in the Western Hemisphere, so let's stay there. You run to Ecuador, you will not be 190 pounds. You'll be like 185 pounds. What? That's how significant it is. That's if I If I did my math correct, and I think I did, there are pounds less that you weigh for living on the equator than for living anywhere else simply because the spinning earth is trying to fling you off nice yes yes it's it's significant so this concept well, of how much do you weigh diet, i just need a plane ticket <laughs> it changes your weight it won't change your mass oh let's make shucks. that clear okay shucks. <laughs> if, if you chubby on the equator you're chubby everywhere <laughs> <laughs> Dad, <gone> it. <laughs> now, here's someone who does not benefit from this, and that's, of course, Santa Claus. Because as you go from the equator and you go to farther and farther north or south, of course, this works the other way, uh, and you go farther and farther away from the equator, the circle that you travel is smaller each day. Your speed is lower. We're here in sort of 40 degrees, between 30 and 40 degrees latitude. Most of the population of the world lives at that latitude and north and south and uh, at this latitude we're going about 800 miles an hour due east so that's slower than the equator guess who's not moving sideways at all has no sideways velocity it's santa claus on the north pole all he's doing is sort of rotating like this but he's not getting flung so if you weigh santa claus on the north pole that is his authentic earth weight oh sweet okay which is only 322 pounds. <laughs> it's all them cookies and milk he That's eats every it, time. Man. <laughs> Actually, he's skinny as a rail during the summer. <laughs> yes. As, as my seven-year-old told me this year, Santa what? Claus can't exist. I went, really? Why not? She said, nobody could eat all those cookies without becoming a diabetic. Oh, there. well, we don't know whether he's a diabetic. Plus, it'd be a fun sort of sci-fi film if he gets thin over the summer, gets on the sleigh, and he's skinny on the sleigh, but every stop he makes, he gets a little fatter, and then the, the reindeer say, we can't do it. <laughs> we got to land this ship. I'm done. <laughs> That's pretty good. Or, or, he, or he gets stuck in the chimney, right? <laughs> At some point, you're not fitting down the chimney. That's all right. I'm saying. That's true. So you can ask the question, at what speed must Earth rotate so that the centrifugal force exactly balances the gravitational weight that you'd otherwise have? You might ask that question. I just did, through you, right okay. now. <laughs> <laughs> so if you spin Earth faster and faster and faster... Right. You weigh less and less and less and less. So this right. Chuck, 190 pounds, 185, 180, 170, 150, 100, 50. There is a point where you will weigh zero. And Which you'll just hover over the equator, standing there. Do you know what mm -hmm. speed that is? I'll tell you. Okay. If Earth rotates once every hour and a half. Damn. Okay, now that's, that's fast, but think about it. Think about it, okay? If we rotate once every hour and a half, and you're just floating there above the Earth, you are actually in orbit around the Earth. That's right. Okay, do you know how long it takes the space station to make one orbit around the Earth? Let me Nin guess. 90 minutes. Ah, I you didn't let me guess. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Was, sorry. Here we go. Wait, wait, wait. Watch this. 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, it's a couple hundred miles up, so it's a little longer, but basically it's in the 90-minute zone. Okay? Earth's surface up to low, what we call low Earth orbit, LEO, low Earth orbit. It all happens in about 90 minutes. So, you can recover what happens in orbit by spinning the Earth so fast 
that everyone on the equator weighs zero. And that happens right when we complete one rotation in basically an hour. But I think if you do the math, it's 88 minutes, but wow. good, good for these purposes. So that's just kind of a fun fact about the rotation that, of the earth, I think. That is really cool. I mean, so you could actually, that's like super low earth orbit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you don't have to worry about ducking the trees because everybody with you is, is also, also orbiting. Exactly. Floating. Is also that's floating. That's right. Cool. Uh, I left out something. Earth is slightly flattened at the poles and slightly wider at the equator. We might have said this on another explainer. Right. So we're oblate. We're sort of hamburger shaped rather than prolate, which would be hot dog shaped, stretched pole to pole. We're, we're flattened at the equator. So everyone on the equator is farther away from the center of the earth than people living on the poles, people and penguins living near the poles. If you're farther away from Earth's center, the force of gravity on you is less. Mm. So already their weight is less just because Earth is bulbous at the equator relative to the poles. Then you throw in the rotation on top of it. Folks on the equator got it made in the shade. Well, watch out, Atkins. There's a new <laughs> Atkins diet, diet coming. <laughs> it's a new keto diet. <laughs> it's a new keto diet, the super low Earth orbit <laughs> diet. Earth orbit diet. The super low Again, Earth orbit diets diet. are so that you lose mass, not that you lose weight. Oh, yeah, All right, that's just right. to make that I clear. Keep forgetting that. And Chuck, one last thing. I said Coriolis force was another sort of fictitious force. So air pockets going north from the equator overtake the land that they find themselves over because it was going sideways faster than the new place it finds itself. Okay, so it overtakes it. Air pockets moving due south find themselves on land that's moving faster than they are, than they used to be. So what happens is if you have a low pressure system, air from above it ends up coming in behind it and that creates a general circulation that is counterclockwise for all storms and nearly all tornadoes, okay? There's some exceptions, but it requires extraordinary circumstances to counterbalance that. So all storms in the Northern Hemisphere rotate counterclockwise. If you sped up Earth, mm -hmm. you increase the Coriolis forces and then you have ferocious storms such as what's happening on Jupiter. Ah. Okay. Jupiter is way bigger than Earth. Yeah. But like it's you know 10 times across okay, you fit like 10 Earths across the width of Jupiter, something like that. Maybe 8 Earths. And Jupiter rotates twice as fast as Earth does. Oh. There it is. So, Jupiter had the great red spot. Oh, the beautiful red spot. It is a storm and it's been raging for th more than at least 300 years. Okay, so so wow. these are the consequences of. That's a weatherman's. Never. Uh, I can't. <laughs> I was about it's to a say. weatherman's happy place. Yes. I was gonna say yes. <laughs> the weatherman will always have a job on Jupiter. That is a weatherman's dream, just like that. A three hundred year storm. Yeah. I'm never. I'll never be fired. <laughs> I got a lifetime job. Right. I so Chuck, we got to call it quits there. All right. Well, All right. Always good, good to have you, man. Always good to be here. We're done here. I've been your host, Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. And as always, keep looking up.